The Montre Public Library welcomes you to the next chapter, Designing Your Ideal Life Program, Hand Reflexology to the Rescue, presented by Sky Song Fell. Sky Song began her reflexology studies in 1981 after many years as a professional nurse. She also served three years on the board of the Reflexology Association of California for two of those years as president. She offers her clients a powerful opportunity to participate in their own healing by selecting multiple therapeutic modalities ranging from reflexology to massage to sound healing. Her medical background combined with her sensitive intuitive skills and highly effective touch therapies blend to empower her as a gifted healing facilitator. Thank you so much Sky for being here today. Well, thank you. Can you hear me? Everybody hear me okay? Hi, hi, Brian. Uh, I want to first start by thanking Monterey Public Library for making uh, this opportunity available to me uh, and for continuing this amazing series, this educational series that is, I think, probably very unique. Um, certainly in our area, maybe in California, maybe in the whole country, I don't know. But thank you so much. I'm really delighted to be here and I'm excited to share uh, some of my knowledge with everyone that's on board with us today and everyone who will watch the recording afterward. Um, I titled it Reflexology to the Rescue because all of us are a little bit, you know, feeling a little under fire, so to speak. <laughs> uh, we've got a lot going on. And in particular, I wanted to focus on sharing with you what I have learned uh, that would be helpful in terms of preparing our body to be in a much healthier state, a much more uh, balanced state in order to um, basically fend off any little things that might come our way that we don't want to um, offer a home to. <laughs> and so I'm going to focus on just a few parts of the hand um, that will directly give you information that you can work on your own hands to uh, help keep those parts of your body clear, free of toxins, energized, and just balanced and in better shape. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and first of all, I did uh, want to mention I'm Francesca did put in, if you hopefully you saw it, um, for the practice sessions, which we'll be doing throughout, uh, it is best if you're thumb and index fingers, if you're going to practice along with us, they should be filed down fairly closely because you don't want to be stabbing yourself with your fingernails and the technique just works a lot better. If that is not possible, you can take a pencil, the eraser end of a pencil and just use it as if it's your finger or your thumb. And I'll show you that as we go through again. The other is you can use your knuckle. If for some reason you can't use your, you know, your fingertips, it might be easier than using fingertips, but I will be using my fingers as I'm working. So I'm going to start with a few kind of questions. First of all, what is reflexology? Most of you probably know, I know Brian does, I've worked on his feet. <laughs> um, and we have, uh, let's see, that'd be page number one. So you can read this along uh, with me because I didn't want to try to memorize it all. I wrote this, as you, I should know it word for word, but I, I feel that it embodies the full understanding of what reflexology is. It's an ancient healing art. It deals with the principle that every organ, gland, and cell in the body is represented by precise reflex points on the feet, the hands, and the ears. And a lot of people don't know it. It also involves the ears, which are holographic maps of the body. By applying specific thumb, finger, and hand techniques to those areas, we are able to break down and move along accumulations blocking the energy flow to and through the meridians, the energy pathways, and I'm sure many of you have heard of the meridians. The resulting increased energy, coupled with stimulation of thousands of nerve endings, and there are thousands, triggers physiological changes in the corresponding parts of the body. This improves nerve and blood supply, restores balance to the body system, thus activating our own natural healing potential 
on a cellular level. And I do mean cellular. When you receive a professional reflexology session that is what I consider a professional session, pretty close to every cell in your body should have been stimulated with um, energy and uh, rejuvenating um, nerve and relaxation uh, potential. So next question, what does reflexology do? Now you know that we've kind of described it a little bit in the definition. Um, these are typical questions that I hear. And there's three basic things that are considered all around the world and reflexology is around the world. Um, these are considered the basic core um, effects of a reflexology session. The first thing it does is relaxes tension through the body. And therefore it is a major stress, stress releaser. Right now with COVID-19, everyone is feeling uh, on some level or another, some more so than others, bless you, um, with stress uh, associated with COVID-19. So um, this will help to calm some things down. Why? Because this has been scientifically documented. Our endorphins and our serotonin levels are actually raised during and following a reflexology session, which is critical to help us to move through our stressful times and stay balanced. So the second thing it does, it improves nerve and blood supply by direct pressure stimulation. So as we work on the hands, we're also pressing on nerve and blood supply that are connected to the brain, which connects to the, the uh, corresponding parts of the body. And then it assists the body in naturally achieving cellular homeostasis, which is balance. And that's what this is all about. It's about removing the block to our ability to be balanced in every single cell. And when all our cells are balanced, they function on their maximum highest level and potential of wellness. So the next question, what are we feeling for with this technique? Because as you start practicing, you're gonna start asking you, what am I supposed to feel for? So let me tell you. What we're feeling for are what we call crystal formations. And these are actually crystalline formations. They're predominantly formed from calcium and accumulated waste particles that become trapped in low energy areas in the hands and the feet and the, the corresponding areas. Um, so the crystal formations, you will actually, you can potentially feel kind of a crunchiness as you actually work the technique. You might feel a little bit of crunchiness in the tissues that you're working on. Those are what forms what we call a reflex. Uh, the other thing we're looking for is a bit of swelling, and that can be from fluids that can become trapped. Again, in an area where the energy has dropped because the energy in the corresponding part of the body is blocked for some reason, whether it's trauma, infection, increased swelling, all of those things block the free flow of energy through the body. And so that can cause a backup in the body and sometimes fluids can get um, trapped in the area. As we work the technique, we're going to be moving those, those fluids along. We do not always feel fluids, but dominantly people will feel some crystal formation. And then the third thing we're feeling for is firm, abnormally dense tissue indicating a reflex formation. Now, that's something that until you've done enough reflexology, it's hard to determine what soft normal tissue and what hard firm tissue. So, um, but you may be surprised. You may discover some things as you work on your hands today. You might find some areas that feel really tense and tight. Uh, and that and also would be tender, which would indicate that you've got a reflex formation there, which means it wants to be worked so it can be clear. So I just wanted to add this uh, before we get to the end here. As with all body work, drink plenty of water after to dilute and flush any toxins released during the session. Because that is one of the things that happens is as the energy starts moving through the body, the cells start to do what they're designed to do. And one of those things is to detoxify and let those, those um, toxins move along to the areas of the body where they can be released and let go. So, Let's go to page two. 
And we're doing some mental stuff to start with here, and then we're gonna get to some practice uh, very shortly. Now, page two, you got that there? Page two is a little bit about the history of reflexology. And it's not a full page, but that's, no, we still don't have a full page. It's kind of cut out a little bit on the lower right corner. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is a little bit of a smattering of, of uh, diagrams from around the world, just to give you an understanding that reflexology isn't just, <laughs> when I first heard about reflexology, you'll laugh. I was not living in California and someone told me about it. And my first thought was, oh, now that really sounds like some kind of scheme um, out of California to fleece people of their money. <laughs> However, when I started studying it, I learned reflexology is very ancient as many of you probably know, and it has spread around the world. Now, a lot of these uh, pictures you'll see on this, um, this page are from earlier times on the planet because that was when it got going. The upper left corner is a little bit of a picture from uh, um, 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 a, a tracing from the exterior wall of the physician's tomb in Saqqara, Egypt. And the carbon dating on that wall is 2300 BC. We say BCE because you know that they're not certain exactly to the year. So 2300 um, BC is quite a long time ago, 4300 years. And that is definitely a hand reflexology session that is going on there without a doubt. And then the picture below that is from Indonesia, which is also uh, a hand reflexology and if you could see, there are, are icons and um, paintings uh, on the hand, all of which indicate and indicated at the time that this was being practiced in, in Indonesia, which it is still now, um, indicate that there is something special about the hands and about the places on the hands relative to the whole body. Um, the picture to the right of Indonesia is along the bottom is from Japan. And that goes back thousands of years. I didn't get an exact dating on that. But, and of course that links in with the study of acupuncture. And if anyone's ever had acupuncture on their feet and hands, they know that they put a lot of needles in the hands and feet. It's a similar type. It's not exactly reflexology, but it is a form of stimulation of the hands and feet in order to affect changes in other parts of the body. And the next picture beside that is from China. And the dating that I found on that was 2500 BC, which is even older than the uh, Egyptian heritage. The upper one there is from Tibet, also probably in around the similar time. Uh, and India in the middle uh, is, goes back actually 3000 BC. The history, I, actually, I want to add something about the history of reflexology because it's not all ancient. Uh, reflexology was introduced to North America back in the early 1900s. Uh, and it was through a book that was written by a Dr. William Fitzgerald, uh, who was an ear, nose, and throat specialist who had studied in China. And he wrote a book called Zone Therapy. And that book became available to people here in America and a woman named Eunice Ingham, who was a physical therapist, picked up that book and fell in love with it and started working with it. And she is considered the mother of reflexology here in this part of the world and eventually founded the International Institute of Reflexology, which trains people around the world. And so it's, it's, it's become pretty well known. It's very popular in Europe and a lot of places. Um, and I'm hoping to make it very popular here. <laughs> okay, so let's go to page three. I want to talk a bit about what are the theories of reflexology, like how does it work? There's a number, there are a number of theories of reflexology, but I wanted to focus on the primary one, which is called zone therapy because it's the one that is recognized pretty much around the world and is, is considered uh, the basic theory of reflexology. In this chart, what you're seeing is, you see the man in the middle there, and he's got 
horizontal uh, lines running, I'm sorry, vertical lines running through them, and they're coming down into the hand. This is a diagram of what are called the 10 zones of reflectology. And the zones equate to a certain degree to the meridians. The zones are the pathways through which energy moves in our body. It's just like blood moves through blood vessels, the lymph moves through lymph nodes, uh, nerve impulses move along neurons. Energy moves through zones and meridians in our body. And so this is how we are able to map the body onto the hands and the feet so we can figure out, okay, this lady has a really sore shoulder. Where do I work on her hand in order to find the reflex that's going to help restore balance to her shoulder tissue? And so the upper line, uh, you can see up in the shoulder area, is the shoulder line. And that these lines just help, help us delineate how to correlate to the hands and the feet. The shoulder line, and then we come down to the waistline. And there's a couple of other lines you're going to see uh, in some more charts as we go through. But this is how we can figure out, for example, if you look at the head, that holds all the zones. But each individual hand has five fingers, and those zones are delineated by the five fingers. It would be helpful if they could see me, I think. Can, can I be beside the, the chart? No? No, okay, that's okay. Um, so this is just to help you get a feeling and understanding of how we can correlate the hands and the feet also are part of this, they're just not in this diagram, uh, to the parts of the body that are in pain or that are um, swollen or infected. And so where can we go in the hand to uh, restore balance to those tissues? Okay, so let's go on to the next chart. Chart number four. Can you see that there? There we go. Now this is showing us, we're gonna start to work now. Everybody get your fingers limbered up. <laughs> we're gonna start working on ourselves and the first thing that I decided to work on in consideration of what's going on with COVID-19 is to, because COVID-19 is going to impact the whole body. It may just affect the lungs and the immune system, but the whole body is going to be affected. And one of the ways to work a major part of the body is to work the spinal reflexes. And yeah, okay, so the spinal, I really need to be on the screen with these charts. Can we do that? No, um, you are, but you're Am in- I? Okay, I just don't see myself. And you're in a very um, small window box. If okay. people want SkySong to be larger, if you go to the top of your screen on most Zoom platforms, it's not going to be the same for everybody. You can see where it says view options. And if you click on that, and then you click side by side, you'll then see Sky Song larger. And if you um, wave your mouse between the edge of the photograph and then the edge of where Sky Song is, or actually it'll be where I'm at right now, you'll see a line that appears and then you can mouse on that and you can drag that line to expand or decrease the size of the screen share. If people don't do the side-by-side -side view, they can still see you, but not as much. So you can tell me when to take the photo down from the screen share. Okay, well, we'll just quickly go through here. Uh, as you can see along, now let's see, I'm gonna hold up my left hand because I'm right-handed. <laughs> anyway, that chart, that diagram of the hand we're looking at is showing us the bony structure because we use the bones as guidelines too. And it's showing us the, the reflex area for the entire spinal area, which starts right here at the base of the very first joint, at the, the top of the joint, the very distal, we call it distal joint, the furthest joint on the thumb. And it comes all the way down along that bony ridge, around, across, down to the wrist area, and all the way across to the other side of the wrist. 
And I think that chart shows it pretty well. Um, the chart also is showing us as we work those reflexes on our hands, we are energetically influencing all of the organs that you see. And this, these are the um, endocrine organs in our body. And so by working those reflexes along the spine, we are actually sending healing, balancing, detoxifying energy uh, to all those organs, which is really quite, I think, amazing and powerful um, to think that we've got that kind of power right there in that little section of our hand. So um, the, the diagram just on the lower left corner of the page is showing us how to work the spinal reflexes. And I wanna point out the hand technique. If you look, you'll see that the hand that you're going to be working with is resting on the underside, the back of the hand, and then your thumb is going to start working along that line, and you're gonna walk with your thumb, just as I'm doing, let me come up a little closer here walking with your thumb along that bony line. And as you do, you're stimulating all those reflexes to the spinal column. So right at the base here on this side is the base, it's the coccyx area, right at the base of the spine. And then as we move along here, we come into the lumbar area. And then we come over up into past the lumbar, up into the, um, the thoracic area, into the mid-back area, and then we come up into the neck, right up to the very top, the atlas and the axis where the head and the neck join. So you can work that area, and I'd like you to just try to work along with me, and um, hopefully you can, you can take questions at the end, and if we don't have enough time, you can email me and I can respond, but walk along that edge with me. Let me back up just a second. I want to talk about the thumb technique because there is a special technique that works the best. And the next diagram is showing us on that same page is showing us um, the options, the, the good, better, best options. If we can go back to that. Yeah, the, the upper is showing us the thumb is bent too much. You don't want too much of a bend in the thumb, not a real bend, and you don't want it flat not bent way up, not flat. What you want is something in between. And the action that is used is typically described as an inchworm motion so that you're actually moving in an inchworm type of motion, rolling to the tip of your finger to your thumb and applying pressure. And as you walk along there, you're probably gonna feel a few places that are a little bit tender especially right there for me, the lumbar area, and then up into the back, mid-back along, this is all the spine, all the way up to the, where the head and the neck join, to the atlas and the axis. So that's the way to work that hand. Now the reflexes on the other hand are the same. So working, as the diagram shows, that person is working the right hand. So that would be the right half of the spinal reflexes. When you go to the other hand, you're gonna be working the other half. So this, this is my, so I, let's say we'll go to the left hand. So if you go to the opposite hand, you're working the other half of the reflexes for the spine. Because when you put those together, that's the whole spinal area there. The hand is a little more um, challenging to teach because it's not shaped exactly the same as the foot, but you can work on your own hand. And um, the reason that's valuable is because you can work on your hand anywhere, anytime. You could be doing it right now. You can do it as you're watching um, the news or a movie at home or something, or just in conversation with someone. It's a tool that you can use anytime, anywhere, pretty much to assist your body to heal, balance, and relieve pain. So, um, okay, I'm just gonna do that one more time. I wanna be sure you can see how my, I'm, I'm 
balance. I'm using back pressure here. It gives me something to push against. Okay, so I'm walking up along the spinal column. All the way up. And the same on the opposite hand. That gives us the other half of the spinal reflex. Because like I said, when we put those hands together, that's the whole spinal system. Okay, um, hang on one sec. Let's see, now, let us go to the next diagram. Next chart. Okay. And now we're going to start working. Again, thinking about COVID, the target areas that we've been hearing about, well, of course, it tends to attack us or um, join with us through the nasal and sinus passages, mostly the nasal and throat area down into the uh, bronchus and the deep into the lung area. So it felt important that we cover the spinal area because of course it helps so many organs. But now we're going to work the uh, area for the lung. And on this diagram, I've added some little pointers for you because again, we have guidelines that help us map the body onto the hand. So in this diagram, you can see a line running across, the black line across the base of the fingers it comes down into this area between the index and the thumb. That is called the shoulder line. Shoulder line because the fingers represent the head from the neck up, actually from the shoulders up, the fingers. And then from the shoulder line down to the neck line, which we come across here, that is, no, here, is the diaphragm line. And the diaphragm is that large muscle at the base of our lung that is critical for us to be able to breathe and is dramatically traumatized by COVID and by any infection uh, or trauma to the lung. So we want to work between those two lines, the shoulder line and the diaphragm line. And then the dotted lines are showing us where to work. So the upper diagram of the hand at work, let's see, it's at left, so we'll do it this way, showing you the diagram. So you can see the lines on your hand, uh, envision those lines on your hand, and then look at the diagram, and you can see uh, the dotted areas. And so what you're doing is, I guess I should turn it. You're going to walk from the diaphragm line up to the shoulder line. And don't be afraid to go in deep because you can feel the finger uh, bones in there, the metacar metacarpal. What you want to do is go in deep enough that you can actually go in between those bones and walk. Again, use your fingers, brace them on the back of the hand to give you back support, walking up to the shoulder line. And then you can come over. And I also walk along the bony tissue because that helps to stimulate um, the uh, intercostal muscles, which are the muscles that help our lungs to expand and relax. So just follow along the dotted line and come over. And again, up to the shoulder line, down to the diaphragm line, walking up to the shoulder line as you keep moving over in between the, the bones, the metacarpal, 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 and then along the bone again. And now this area in here between the thumb and the index finger is very unique. It's important to work that, but there's a little different technique for that. You take your thumb and index finger and place them, see if I can get this right, into that V-shaped area between the index and the thumb. And massage it and walk like your fingers are walking together. Walk down into that V shaped area, come back and walk down some more in the middle area, and then come over closer to the thumb bone. That's perfect for the thumb bone. That's a good area to work. Let me 
show you in this slide. I'm going to show you on with some of the other uh, next chart that we come to. But that's important to work. So, um, let me see. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to do that again because it's important to understand the shoulder line, the diaphragm line. We're working in between those lines because that represents our body from here down to our diaphragm, which is where our lungs are located. A lot of other organs are in there as well, but we're focusing on the lungs again because we want to prepare our lungs and nourish them and help keep them well supplied with immune cells, et cetera, so that, of course, we're not going to get COVID, right? Because we're all wearing our masks and we're staying at home, uh, which is why we're doing this on Zoom. I, normally, I do it in a classroom. And I would love to hear your feedback tremendously. Um, so once more, follow those imaginary lines. And this will all be up on, on the uh, website after, on the, uh, the uh, library website. You can follow it through. This area in here is very, very important, um, particularly for the um, what we call the bronchus area, which is the, the airway that takes, goes from our, our throat down into our uh, lungs. Okay, um, now let's drop down to the bottom of the page on the right-hand side, because I gave a little diagram there to show where we work for the throat and the nasal area, which is the thumb. So, I don't, I don't see the whole chart here. I hope you guys can see the full chart at home. But this is the area for the throat. Now, this part of our hands is the front of our body. And this is actually, for reflexology purposes, the back of the body. Because when you're standing up, you're not usually standing with your hands like this. Usually the hands are down like this. So um, to, to work on the throat area, it would be this part of the throat, I'm sorry, this part of the thumb, and this is my right thumb. So this would be my right half of my throat, and this would be the left half. So if I work on this area, I'm working, and you can use the same technique, walking with your thumb, starting right at the, the joint at the base of the thumb, starting there and walking from the side around up to the first joint. So that takes us around the throat, up into the nasal passages. And sinus passages are another thing. They're kind of complicated. So we're just going to leave it with this. You can come from the other side using the same technique. And you can also use a, a, a different technique where you can kind of grasp the thumb and walk down with all your fingers. And that's also a very good technique for working the, uh, the throat. And a very important organ in there is our thyroid gland. And our thyroid gland is, it's called the queen of heaven. <laughs> thyroid gland has a direct impact on many, many, many organs and systems in our body. It's extremely an important organ and it's tiny. It's a little butterfly, butterfly shaped organ right on, on our uh, larynx that is so important, it's quite amazing. It produces thyro thyroxin and, and uh, assist in, in uh, our immune system to a, great, to a very powerful degree. So important to work the thumb reflexes in here. Okay, so Let's go to the next chart, which is page six. And now we're going to work the lungs again, but we're going to work the lungs from the back of the body because the lungs go all the way through from the front to the back. This is a diagram of the right hand with the palm down now. So you're looking at what we call the back of the hand. It's not really the back of the hand, but that's what it is referred to. Uh, and that's based on medical um, anatomical charts. So what we're going to do is work the same area. As you can see, there's the shoulder line. And then there's the diaphragm line. 
and we're going to work between those areas. But this is a little different because it's not padded like the, the palm of the hand. We have all the tendons and the bony tissue here. So the way we're going to work that is similar though. And again, don't forget to work this area between the thumb and the index finger. That's an area you can work also if you're getting a headache. Uh, it's called a triple warmer in um, shiatsu and trigger point. It, um, in reflexology, it, it, it really assists in um, opening up with the uh, bronchus area for breathing and to help us relax and to get more oxygen up to our brain. So the next is to work between the index finger and the middle finger. And we can do that. I'm gonna use my thumb on the back of my, on the palm of my hand as my back pressure and walk down. Now there is a diagram on the upper left of that uh, page called working the lungs. And that's what I'm doing. Now I'm using one finger to work in there. And uh, we go in deep, again, go in. Don't just go on along the surface. Push your finger in so you can feel like your finger is really sinking into the tissue. And you'll come to a place just a little further down where you can't really go any further. That's where you hit the diaphragm line and then you stop there. So then you come over to the neck and walk down until, again, you kind of come to a stop. That's where the diaphragm line is because you've now reached the bottom of the lung area. And next, we're moving over from the midsection out to the side of the body. So, um, yeah, orientation here. The thumb area is related to the middle part of our body. I know that looks weird, doesn't it? <laughs> and then all of the fingers relate to the parts these zones of the body as we move from the first zone out to the side of the head and down through the other zones on the body. And so from the thumb, we're working zone one, which is near the center. And as we move out to the baby finger, we're working zone five, which is out along the side of the head and down to the, the shoulder area. So that's how we work the lungs. And now you've worked the lungs completely. You can use, as they're showing in the diagram, you can use a nut, all your fingers, basically make a little fist. And you can work down all those areas with several fingers, if that feels stronger and more useful for you. Um, I do both. I work with one, and then I'll come back and work with, with, with uh, all three to kind of go over these areas. And when you're giving yourself a session, you should work over these areas several times. Um, just once, it kind of gets the energy going. So I say go over it like four or five times when you're working on yourself. When I'm working on a client, I'm feeling for what I can find in there. For example, um, I can feel a little bit of crunchiness in here on my hand, and that probably from back muscles <laughs> because to get to the lung inside if you're coming from the back you're going to go to back muscle ribs and then you'll come into lung tissue so the back muscles are also part of what's going on here i'm sorry that's not the back that's the front. this is the front this is the front of the body i apologize i take that back this is the front of the body this is the back of the body so this is related to the right side of the body, moving down the chest area to the diaphragm area and down to the uh, base of the spine. So sometimes that can be really tender in there because if you have, um, well, if you've had a lot of lung infections, uh, you're gonna have a little scar tissue in the lungs, so that's gonna make them tender. Uh, if you've ever had a rib injury or you've taken a bad fall and you twisted your, you know, your um, ribs, they can be extremely tender. I had a rib injury last year and it took me a year to heal it. So you may find that tender in here as you're working through the lung area. Okay, now all these reflexes convert to the other hand as well. So we can go ahead and work down. 
the long area on this is my left hand. And working through the middle area on the next one. And then working that area between the thumb and the index finger, massaging it. It's more like a massaging technique. And it actually can be very tender. If you have you know, a lot of tenderness in the uh, shoulder area here, the upper lung and shoulder area, um, that's a good place to work. But you do want to go in deep because that'll go down deep into the bronchus area of the lung. So you want to keep those areas well nourished with lots of fresh blood supply and um, free of uh, um, accumulation. Now, what kind of accumulation? Um, we live in an area here where it's either blooming or <laughs> or Lord knows what, <laughs> I live near the airport. So, you know, I'm cautious of the air quality. Um, not that it's really bad, but we breathe in a lot of things that can end up in our lungs that can constitute um, irritants that our body responds to by uh, creating mucus to protect us from those irritants. So one of the things to keep in mind when we do a reflexology session on ourselves is that we are stimulating the immune system in the body. We're stimulating um, basically the detoxifying organs of the body. And when that happens, we can have things come up. For example, um, when I first experienced reflexology, I didn't know anything about it. And, but I was having, uh, well, I'll describe what happened first. Um, the gentleman working on me was working on the reflexes on my foot. And after about 10 minutes, I started sneezing and sneezing, and I must have sneezed about six times, one after the other. And I kind of laughed and said, oh, how that's strange. You worked on my foot and I'm sneezing. And he said, oh, no, no, not a coincidence. No, I just worked on your sinus reflexes. And so what happened was, as he worked on the sinus reflexes, it actually allowed energy to move up uh, into my sinus uh, area that allowed the sinuses to then release and detoxify. So I'm gonna come back just a little more about and explain, okay, another factor of how this works because I think this is important, it is, it is. Let's say uh, you have a shoulder area that's um, swollen, you see a play tennis and it's just killing it. And, um, it hurts, it's painful, it's swollen, it's hard to move. Because there's trauma in the area there, the body sends extra cells to nourish the tissues. It sends fluid and calcium to kind of fortify it, to stabilize it so it is um, going to be protected from you know, being injured further. So the body sends fluids and tissues and cells to an area that's been traumatized. Now, trauma can also be infection. Um, it can be um, stress can actually create a tremendous amount of trauma in our body. So what happens is when we have that, then, uh, okay, <laughs> um, when we have that fluid and calcium build up, the calcium crystallizes in there to create like a shield, to shield the area. But what happens is the extra fluid and calcium that builds up in there, what we call a reflex in the foot is formed because the energy cannot move as freely through that traumatized area. So you've got an energy block here, which is blocking energy through those zones through the whole body. And you get a backup and in the feet and the hands, which are the terminal ends of, they're the opening uh, receptive ends for energy into our body. Those are our receptors, uh, like our terminal and um, like our feelers, cat twisters, whatever you wanna call them. Um, when we have a traumatized area where there's blocked energy, the corresponding part on the hand for the shoulder, the right shoulder, would be the base of the baby finger, right in here. 
head, shoulders, body, lower torso area. So here is where the shoulder reflex would be. Now, if I had a trauma to my right shoulder, I, and I have had, <laughs> I don't right now, I would have a very, very tender, crunchy area right in here because of the blocked energy in the shoulder, blocks energy through the whole zone, and that causes blocked energy in the corresponding places of the hands and the feet. So what do we do about that? In reflexology, by applying that technique of walking with the thumb or the finger, applying pressure, release, move forward, pressure, release, move forward, pressure, release, move forward, what we're doing with that pressure is actually mechanically breaking down calcium deposits and metabolite deposits that can, can get stuck in those reflex areas. So as we break them down and sweep them along, they then crush down into smaller particles and metabolites can form into crystals too. When I talk about calcium crystals, calcium is an element that is unbelievably needed throughout our body. We need it for our hair, skin, nails. Uh, every time we use a muscle, every time we blink, we're using calcium in the calcium ion chain. And so we've got a lot of calcium going around in our body. When the body sends it to an area and reinforces it to stabilize it, we also have calcium that will block in the corresponding part of the body. When the calcium ions move out of the bloodstream into the area, the corresponding area of a trauma or an illness, once they move out of the liquid stream of the blood, they go into their crystalline formation. When they're in liquid, for example, if you take a glass of water and you put salt crystals into the water and stir it up, those salt crystals change, they alchemically transform. You can't see the crystals anymore. They are combined with the water and have gone into a liquid form. But when they come out of the bloodstream and get trapped in an area where there's blocked energy or where there's blocked energy in the corresponding part of the body, blocks energy in the reflex area, at, as soon as they move out or shortly after they move out of the liquid stream of the blood, they convert back to their crystalline form. That is the alchemy that happens naturally in our body. And that can happen with other things, metabolites and, and uh, toxins that are moving around our body on their way, just minding their own business, on their way, going to the liver, going to the kidneys to get detoxified out. But when they hit an area in the body where the energy has dropped because of a block energy somewhere in the body, they're going to move out of the bloodstream because there's not enough pressure to keep them moving. So they'll move out and go into their crystalline form. So what we're doing is breaking up those crystals and moving them along. So I know you have questions. I can feel them. I wish I, wish I could uh, take a few questions, but uh, we will have time to take some questions. We're, we're getting close to the finish here. I didn't want to overload you with too many things. And I wanted to try to keep them, you know, connected with the whole concept of how can we use reflexology to keep us in the best shape we can, uh, and hopefully not, but if we need to help relieve ourselves of the symptoms that come along with the, any, any kind of, you know, upper respiratory or deep lung infection. Uh, there's one last thing, and uh, Francesca, if we could come back to page five. I wanted to just cover one last thing, which is really important in terms of dealing with, oh my goodness, all the things we're dealing with here. <laughs> um, COVID in particular, because it is such a huge challenge to the body on multi-level. On the lower left part of that page five, I put a little diagram showing, I hope people can see that. It shows where to work for the adrenal gland. And we have two adrenal glands, one on our left side, which sits on our left kidney, and one on the right side that sits on top of the right kidney. And the adrenal glands are the ones that produce adrenaline, of course, and a whole bunch of other uh, really important um, um, 
micronutrients that we need for our immune system and our health. And so that uh, little dot there, right at the tip of the thumb, is showing you where to work, whoops, I better get the right area here, where to work for the adrenal gland. Now, it's usually right in that general area, and for a lot of us, you'll find a very, very tender, very tender spot. You can also work it, I'm gonna show you with my hand. Now I'm working it with my thumb and I can feel mine right there, right there, okay? And it's like a pinpoint. You can also work it with the knuckle of your opposite hand. You can come in there, can you see what I'm doing there? Hard to, okay, okay, yeah. These are good questions. So I wanted you to know where to work for your adrenal gland. And you can get in there. Once you find it, you'll know it because it's going to be tender. Most of us, especially, you know, when we get up in years, our adrenals have been pretty challenged. So once you find it, you can actually just stay there and hold pressure on it. I like to use my knuckle on the adrenal gland because it gives me enough pressure through the pad of the thumb that I can get in there and give it a good kind of rolling kind of massaging uh and it really i have a client every time i work in adrenal glands he always says ask me well i don't have to ask you now i know you just work my adrenal glands because i can feel energy which is wonderful i love the feedback okay um i think that that is pretty much it um we could take a few questions, and I know you have you have some great questions. So I no. your questions. There was a question about the corresponding to the left hand. Yeah, all the same things are on the left hand. It's the things we talked about today, you'll find them all the same place on the left hand. I just wanted to try to be brief, but um, yeah, absolutely. For the spinal reflexes, all the same place on the left hand. Here's my left hand. For the lungs, it's the same places on the left hand, the palm of the hand, which is the back of the body, and then the, the, the other side of the hand, which is the front of the body, and the intercostal muscles and the ribs. So lungs, lungs, spine from, from the head all the way down and across the wrist to the base of the spine. The Neck, I'm sorry, the, the throat is at the base of the thumb on the thumbnail side of the throat. So it, it's a uh, thumbnail side of the thumb, sorry. This is very awkward, right? <laughs> Get it in there. I got to make a video, a movie a video of this. Anyway, that's the thumb area there right up into the nasal area. Same thing on the left hand again. All the same places, you just transfer them over to the left hand. And then the adrenal gland on the left hand would be in exactly the same place on the left hand, right in around there. And just feel around in there, walk in there with your finger or your thumb. See, I went, I went right to it <laughs> because mine are both a little tender. And don't be afraid to work. Don't be afraid to go deep. This is your hand. You can manipulate and control how much pressure you give yourself. Um, not that you want it to be a white knuckle experience. You don't want to be inflicting pain on yourself, but you want to go deep enough that you get to the level where you can actually impact uh, a shift in the reflex, that you can actually impact through the pressure, through breaking up the calcium crystals, through triggering uh, the nerve response in there that is going to assist through the brain and through the uh, zone area, assist in sending, in this case, increased energy to the adrenal gland so that it can function on a higher level. Now, I think that's everything we covered on the left hand. Okay, um, that's, that's it as far as the, the teaching goes, but I, I would love to get some questions now. And Brian, if you're still there, you were asking about the knee reflexes. Are you still there, Brian? And then just so, oh, I need to let him unmute. Just so you know as well, there are questions in the chat box as well. So um, after. Okay. I'm here. Okay. Hi. 
Hi okay, there. You, you were asking Great presentation. About, oh, thank you. Thank you. It's awkward, but thank you so much for sticking with it. Um, you were asking about the knees. The knees yes. are, yeah, the knees are, if you follow along at the base of the baby's finger, you'll, you'll follow a little, you know, ridge, a bony ridge here, and you'll come down, and you'll feel a little round nodule that kind of sticks out right about here. Okay. Can you find that? Yes. That little nodule is where the knee reflex is located. Okay. Good. So Good. you can work that. Yeah, you can work that all around it with your thumb. Press right on it. Work around it, kind of in a circular motion. You can take your knuckle and work on it. And it's a good one to work because, well, we know the knees kind of take a challenge, don't they? Yes. I've been really focusing on getting my knee, knees more reflexible because I see how important it is for our youthfulness is to keep our knees flexible. So there you go for the knees. And Thank then you. now chat box. I need to go to chat box. Where's that? Chat box. Is that more? If, if yeah, you, here we go. I got that. Okay. Okay. Uh, a specific spot for L4, L5 back pain. Okay. Okay. I'll answer the that last part first. Elbow pain. That part that I just explained to Brian about the knee reflex, exactly the same place for the elbow. Sounds weird, but that's because our bodies energetically are connected and layered in multi different ways. So that same bony ridge, it's a kind of a, it sticks out right at the side and there's one on the left for the left knee and there's the same one on the right for the right knee. That is the target area to work for the knee, or sorry, for the elbows and the knees. Why is that? Because here we go, uh, referral areas. The hands refer to the feet. The wrist to the ankle, the elbow to the knee, and the hip, sorry, the shoulder to the hip. So those are interconnected areas. Uh, really quick story here. I worked on a client and um, she it was really tender. I was working on her knee reflex and I, I uh, she asked, well, what is that reflex? It's really tender. I said, it's the knee. She said, oh, that, uh, that makes sense. I, that, I just keep that knee. I said, it's also the reflex for your elbow as well. She said, really? I said, oh my gosh. So if you work the, el the knee reflex, we'll be working the elbow reflex. And I said, yeah. She said, well, I have to show that to my husband. He's been complaining about his right elbow for years and he's never injured it ever. He doesn't understand why it hurts. But he's had a, he had, um, He's had really bad problems with his right knee and he had to have a knee uh, replacement and he's got all kinds of trauma up and down that knee area. And so because of the trauma and the surgery in the right knee, the energetic reflex created tenderness in his elbow. So that, again, when I see and hear those things, it's just reinforcement to me about how real this all is. It's not very, very, it's, it's very, very real. It's over 5,000 years old, so there's got to be something to it, right? Okay, uh, back pain, L4-5. Oh, I know that one. Okay, L4-5 is located on both hands, same place, in this area right in here. L4-5. This is your lumbar area. Can you see my hand? This is the lumbar area here. So L4-5 is the lower, those are the two lower, um, spinal bones in the lumbar area. So they're gonna be right in here. And if you have chronic kind of L4-5 stuff, it's probably crunchy in there and it's probably a bit tender. And you can work that with your thumb, like I said. Even better, you can go in with your knuckle and work that area and rotate through it. And you can work across it this way, you can work it this way, you can come back <laughs> and work it this way. Okay, but that's the area right there for the L4-5. I do want to say one thing. If you ever do reflexology on another person, I don't recommend you, until you've been trained properly to use your knuckle or instrument. 
simply because you can't feel the tissue. And it's easier to pinch or bruise someone um, when you can't feel the tissues that you're working on. So um, on yourself is fine. Because um, if you bruise yourself, you'll know not to do that again. <laughs> Um, but just remember, on yourself, you can do that, and the pencil, etc. cetera. Um, okay, what was next here? Arthritis in the hand. Yes, uh, reflexology movements are affected by arthritis in the hand, which is why uh, we suggested in the beginning, if it's hard for you to do the technique because of arthritis in the hand, you can take a pencil and use the eraser in and do the technique that way. It's a little awkward, but it will get the job done. Okay, um, now if your knuckles are okay, if the arthritis is not in the knuckle, you can use your knuckle. <clears throat> but yes, um, the movements are affected by arthritis in the hand. So that's something that hopefully those two options will work for you. Uh, you may be able to find something other than a pencil eraser. Um, and I'm looking at things that um, Possibly, you know, I can either refer people to a website or have available for people to uh, utilize if they can't use their own hands for the technique. Okay, Mary, how does reflexology compare with acupuncture? They are very, very, very closely related. Basically, reflexology is a form of acupuncture with your fingers, but instead of just going in deep and holding a specific spot, you are going into a depth that is effective and you're walking with your thumb. The technique is different. The impact and the objective that we're going for is the same. Break up block energy, move new energy into the area, get the toxins out of the area, stimulate the corresponding cells in the body. It's just, it's the technique that is different, which is a walking technique which actually is designed to break up those accumulations and break them down into fine particles and sweep them along into the uh, fluid streams of the body, the um, blood and lymph. So that would be the, the really, I would think the prime is pretty much the whole difference between reflexology and acupuncture. Both extremely powerful and they work together very well. So Kimberly, for the shoulders from too much computer work, the base of the pinky finger, yes, absolutely. The base of the pinky finger. Now, bottom of the, uh, the palm of the hand, you're gonna work the pinky finger and you wanna work that whole area and work the side of the joint there at the base of the pinky finger. But then come around and work on the front, this part of the hand too, because this is where the, the shoulder attaches right here. So that's this area right here. This is the back of the shoulder. Okay, so all around here, get in there and work with your thumb, work with your finger, all around the, uh, the, the base of the baby finger. In addition to that, the technique that I showed you in here between your thumb and index finger is also good for the shoulder area. And there, there's more to know about that, but just take it from me. <laughs> uh, it will help that also as well. Okay, where would the uh, right piriformis in the buttocks be located? The piriformis is located right at the very base of the buttock area, which is the side of there. You've got that rounded bone here in the wrist. Come around the side of that, and I come in with my knuckle in there because it just kind of fits right in right in there. And uh, I know the piriformis in the buttocks. I'm well aware of that. And it's talking to me in the reflex here right now. So Ken, I hope you can see that okay. Right in there. Right in there. There's a little notched area there. And your knuckle can fit right in there or your thumb. You just don't want to, you know, press your fingernails in to any of this to, uh, you know, um, scratch or, or, you know, be uncomfortable. But yeah, that whole area right in there. And so that would be the left piriformis. This would be the right piriformis over here. The right hand, same area. Get in there and just really work that. Hold it 
apply some pressure. You can hold while you're doing this too. It isn't always walking. If it feels good to press in and hold it, do it. You know what? They say, if it feels good, do it. So, okay, I hope that helps you. Um, so that's left and right buttocks, piriformis. Regina C, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, let's see, I press in areas at the base of my hand on the edge of the desk and lean my weight again. Oh, okay, yeah. Again, it's your hand. Uh, just be careful as you're doing things, you know, that you're not gonna slip off and injure yourself or take a fall or anything. But if, yeah, if you can find something that you can lean in with your weight, um, Rose says, to everyone, you can probably read this. I press some areas in the base of the hand on the edge of the desk and lean my weight against it. And yeah, arthritis crone. Absolutely, you can work it that way. And other areas that you can work, um, you know, it's all about being creative. You know, I'm just learning at the age of 74, almost 75, that there is no one way to do anything anymore. Um, there's as many ways as we can creatively find, create, transform, um, you know, let's get, let's get creative here. Okay, so thank you for that. And I hope that helps other people out there too. Kimberly, thank you for your thank you. Uh, and any cautions, can you hurt yourself doing reflexology? Only the things that I've mentioned, which are basically, um, if you use an instrument, you know, you might bruise yourself or pinch, uh, pinch something and cause a little, a little bruise or, um, now, there are, there are a couple of cautions with reflexology, but they don't relate to anything that I've taught you today. Um, so, however, that said, there is way back when Dr. Fitzgerald wrote his book, Zone Therapy, he started working with, in those days, they were using closed pins. They were putting closed pins on the fingers in specific areas. He was an ear, nose, and throat doctor. So he was trying to work with the sinuses, which are up in the fingers. And they were using closed pins and then tying, wrapping them with cloth, et cetera, and leaving them for an hour or several hours. And what they found is it could create headaches because it was too much pressure. They were applying too much pressure in the, their sincere effort to relieve congestion in the sinuses they were applying too much pressure that then blocked energy flow in the fingers, which then created a backup of blocked energy flow to the corresponding areas in the head and the sinuses, which then created a headache. So, but you're not gonna go put closed pins on your fingers. I just, somehow I know that, okay? So we're not gonna worry about that. Um, overdoing, overworking an area, if it's really, 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 tender, really tender. Best to work it a little bit at a time, lightly at first, slowly work in to a little deeper level if it's really, really tender. And you, I mean, I've got some, there are some really, I mean, I've worked some areas where I'm going, oh my heavens, that hurt, especially on my feet. Um, so yeah, good question though, thank you. Um, start gently. If you find as you're going along, whoa, that really hurts, come back, go over it, go in a little bit lighter, work around it, come across it in different ways, work it from different angles, work it with your thumb, work it with your you know, knuckles, work it different ways. Um, but basically, if you use the technique properly and you're not over pressurizing an area for a non, an extended period of time, you're not going to hurt yourself. Okay, Christine, thanks so much. You're welcome, thank you. Rose, gently, gently, you are awesome, thank you. Well, thank you so much, oh my goodness, this is wonderful. Um, let's see, uh, okay. Tina C, thank you, Tina. Fun and informative, well, thank you so much. Now, I just wanted to just briefly mention um, a little um, shameless plug, if I may. Um, I do have some, full on hand reflexology coming up in the near future. I'm still putting classes together because I have to sort out uh, uh, timing for this, but it will be uh, most likely over the next four to six weeks. Um, and if, if any of you think you're interested in taking the full on training with me, it will be Zoom. 
um, that's how we are now. We're all Zoomers, right? And I'm learning from Francesca is really teaching me a lot. And bless you, Francesca, thank you. Um, and uh, when you go online for the recording of this, there will be um, my, um, my, I have a new website coming on board. It'll be up very shortly. And uh, my, my phone number, if you want to call me and talk about anything, and my website, and you're welcome to send me emails um, of any length. I'd be happy to receive them. So bless you, thank you, thank you. And you now you own this. This is yours. You own this for the rest of your life. And I hope you use it. That's my wish for you. Bless you. Thank you so much, Sky Song, for being here and sharing your valuable information and knowledge with our community. And since Brian is here in the crowd, a big thanks to Brian as well, who is the instigator of Next Chapter, these wellness series. And thanks, of course, to all of you who are here. And we hope that you learned something new and that you'll be able to benefit from this. You will receive a follow-up email once the recording is available. There'll also be a brief survey if you're able to fill it out. We also always invite and welcome you to share any program suggestions that you have. So we wish you a healthy, safe, and as joyful as can be 2021. And thank you again, Sky Song. Oh, it's my pleasure. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you.